One thing that was super interesting about you is I remember saying, you know, we need to have like a good go-to-market strategy. I remember bringing you in a room with, you know, a, a good marketing team member or whatever. And we were talking about things like running Facebook ads, trying to get, um, that way we could raise awareness for ranchers and raise awareness for buyers as well. But you were like, dead set on not doing any of that kind of explain like your reasoning as to why you would push so hard against you know pre-marketing whereas a lot of other companies would have to do that yeah so i don't it wasn't that i thought it was a bad idea i knew it's valuable mm -hmm. I, I knew it's a thing that works so it wasn't that it i didn't like it i didn't think it was necessary at the time because i had this really rare scenario where mm -hmm. i was I'm, I'm friends with some of the best trainers in the world. Mm -hmm. Like anyone like, yeah, some of the best in the world. So not that we're like best friends and we hang out, but yeah. I, I knew them and they knew me. So I, I just knew that if I can get these people to start doing, it's kind of like launching a product, um, like a new, a new, uh, sports wear and something. And somehow for basketball mm -hmm. and somehow I, I know LeBron, Mm -hmm. I know Kobe, I know, I know all these players, right? And I already talked to them and I knew if I could get them to use it and they like it. So if I can get LeBron and Kobe, all of these guys to start wearing my stuff, yep. I, I think it's important to have that, but that's not, I had a better way. Yep. I just had a better route to market. And, and so it, it was rare. I don't think that's a normal thing. No, and, it, and that's really what it is. You were so familiar with your industry that you were able to make decisions. Yeah. Like, and, and that's huge. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think down the road that I'm going to have that again, yeah. it's not a, it's not bad ideas. It was just, I knew I had a better route to market mm -hmm. at least for raining. So we were talking about this before we started this, but you know, there's, not an unlimited, but there are tons of different disciplines for horses. Yeah. Uh, and so you have reining, you have barrel, cow horse, roping, I mean, racing. There, there's a lot, you know. And so um, I really haven't done any marketing for anything other than reining. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's what's encouraging for me as a founder. Like, so hey, it went, it went good. Like, it's, it's pretty popular now in yeah. raining in less than a year. Um, I can easily translate that over, but it, yeah, I just, I was in a rare situation where. But I mean, less than a year, like just to throw some numbers out there for everybody, no marketing. You, I think you have over 15,000 Facebook followers in your community. Yeah. You have you know, about 10 horses selling every single day. You have 800 people that- like 10 being posted every day as well. Yeah, you have 10 new horses getting listed every day. You have 800 people getting on the app every single day, equating to like 250 searches. So it's like for zero marketing on your end, like that's pretty crazy. And again, I think it shows the importance, like if you can get no, into a market, market, know it and find a niche, mm -hmm. like you're going to, it's going to be way easier to break in than trying to build the next Facebook or sure. Google or whatever else.